down. Where am I? I'm Steven, and we're the Super Maker Bros. This week we print Nafumi's shield from Rise of the Shield Hero. Onto the build. There we go. And we're back for another build. A lot of PLA little pieces. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the good thing about this, it was broken down uh, good. It was broken down poor, small printing. Oh, like across so, the, the build lines, and, or yeah. the, the connecting lines, rather. Yeah, there's only two major build lines on the face, and then since the other part is kind of angled, it worked out pretty good. Uh, so it, looks, it, it looks like from our last video, you still use a lot of epoxy. <laughs> I'm, I like epoxy. <laughs> I have to get some. I, I don't really use it often. Make a bro tip. If you put epoxy on both sides, it's tacky to tack you. I don't know. I don't. But I don't agree with that. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's why you're supposed to glue things up. I just think if you if you put too much epoxy on both sides, you get a little smush, and then it, you have to wipe it away. But that doesn't deny the fact that you're supposed to put it on both sides. Look, you're about to wipe it away right now. <laughs> you knew that was coming. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I definitely think uh, having having some stuff on on like smaller format, it's a little easier if it's cut correctly. Yeah. Which this looks like it wasn't cut like in the detail and you know things like that because yeah. we have some projects where it right where it's connecting, it's like yeah. cutting the handle of a gun right inside the handle like it's it's really difficult uh, this is my new technique i call this the double clamp you clamp one clamp into the other clamp and try and get this idea patented and then make a make a <laughs> new super clamp super <laughs> the super uh, mega bro super, super clamp duper. <laughs> super duper uh so, yeah that that looks pretty cool one of the problems i encountered with this build was that a lot of the pieces being angular they don't they're hard to clamp together and as you can see like I'm well doing, with these regular yeah clamps. with regular uh, squeeze clamps and the little, the mini squeeze clamps. Um, I, I really like those mini ones. Yeah, I think those are just regular clamps. The other ones are uh, squeeze clamps. I could be, I'll look at them later. I, so the, what's funny is that that little clamp you have, I, I have a smaller version of that. Yeah, those clamps, I got them from the dollar store. They're strong. Oh. So now you're getting rid of the, the build line? Oh, what you were saying about the angle is difficult to clamp just because yeah. of that. Okay, so yeah, the, the, this is not a, the, okay. it's like a seventy degree angle. So oh. you'll see as the build goes on that it gets harder to clamp it together. And then I learned a valuable lesson in uh, build. Like I was trying to build this as an assembly. There's the front, and then there's the outer like, rim. the outer ring. Yeah, we'll call it the outer ring or rim. Yeah, and it just it doesn't line itself up. And I I think it's something I've learned in a lot of so, builds. So that's goes, the that's the main issue that I have when I build some stuff. A lot of times I build in portions, and then at the end after I'm done painting. Yeah. I assemble and I'm um, nothing fits. Oh, that's, the way that's I like why it. I assemble all the way and then go back to paint. Yeah. So See, like right here, I'm trying to get this. This part is gonna go on, but the first issue is it, it doesn't fit correctly because I can't I can't clamp it together. Um, that's the only clamp oh, because holding of it. The angle. Yeah, and then you can like literally see me at some point struggling to figure out how to clamp it. I ended up uh, gorilla tape. See it? Yeah. I ended up gorilla taping it to hold it in place, as you can see here. But and what's good is since you didn't paint yet, Gorilla yeah, Tape will hold it yeah. and you won't rip off the... That's why I never I never paint too early. Uh, and this is another type of clamp. Now it doesn't fit. See, I tried to make them as two assemblies and it doesn't fit. I ended up breaking that piece back apart and reverse engineering it. And that's the scrap of PLA I had. And oh, and you glued that to create like... Like a lift. Your something own to hold lift. It. Yeah, essentially, yeah. And I was crunching the numbers up there so I knew how much like clearance I needed. Uh, and and since, since it's not like going to be used for cosplay... Like the back of it, since this is a display piece, yeah. you can have those pieces there and it's not oh, really yeah. gonna. Oh no, the back is horrendous. Matter. When you see it done, it's well, terrible. <laughs> it's freaking terrible. Well, it's a display item, so the display, yeah. uh, the display, you know, you don't need to have the back amazing. Yeah. It, it's it's a, for, a forward facing prop. <laughs> yes. It's, not, it, it's, it's a not, display piece. Yeah, it's not a hero prop. But uh, I definitely had to jimmy rig some stuff together. And this build definitely spawned some ideas for new types of tools and clamps that I would like to try to build or figure out how to build to make our builds easier well the good news know. is we have the technology <laughs> we can create these things so they, yeah you i could actually see, see? on that see, one see me spot struggling yeah. how to do it and then i just use that little platform system to get me around if if this was a, a cosplay item what you could have done was uh potentially hot glue or or use something that's like reversible yeah. on those tabs on the back and then just pull them off yeah well, if, if I was going to, if I was commissioned to cosplay this, or for a cosplayer, I would just go back and reprint it in large format, 
which is what's going to end up happening. In about spoiler alert. Minutes. Yeah, spoiler <laughs> in about two minutes. Um, and yeah, those are my little uh, platforms that I was breaking apart. Too. Oh, okay. So it's just scrap. Yeah. So you can see I finally got it all together and then I finally started sanding it. And I'm bringing it together and it's looking good. And I'm like, alright, it's holding, it's nice and strong. That's why I wanted those extra parts back there to really add some strength. So you'll see it when it flips over. It's a mess back there. Yeah, I, I mean, it's. I, I don't think it's. Since it's, like I said, since it's display, I wouldn't worry too much. Yeah. But I also, you, you got rid of a, a good amount of lines. It looks it looks pretty good yeah. for for that many pieces to become that large of a, yeah. a final. It was nice and flat. It, yeah, keeping it's, it's it, tough. Keeping heavy weights on stuff is, is really good. Yeah, like right there, there's maybe one build line or two, but for the most part, like it looks it looks like that was printed as is. And as you can see, in like the inner ring where the, where the ring connects to the flat surface. That's gonna be all coated in black, and there is a lip there, so it was a beautiful cut by the designer. Yeah, that, that was a really name, good shot. It was, it was beautiful. Where he cut it, perfect. So yeah, that, that's a really good shot. And also the, it, like I said, the fact that you have so many little pieces. That's those are the hardest jobs. That like if it's a giant helmet, you have little pieces. You know, yeah. getting it together to make it look like one is hard. Yeah, and then it's all about the cut lines, but here. Um, once I saw, you know me, once I, I always go with my blacks first before I go into my chromes and my shiny metals. I, I, I was tempted to leave it black. I'm like, oh, this is so cool in black. And with a red gem. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Uh, I, 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 like the, I, I like the black before, uh, but the thing is for me, well, I, I tried it on a project coming up soon. The only thing is I wish we would have, uh, you know, I, I, I like to leave it slightly black and yeah. slightly gray. It, it looks it looks really so good. So this was a test. I was testing Plasti Dip because I wanted that to be this thick coating in there. And it does not work. It, it didn't work the way I wanted to. Plasti Dip was not the right application. It's not very malleable. It's very thick and it was hard to move. And it kind of left me with this lumpy surface. And it really discouraged me from the build because everything it touched, the paint got messed up. And then... I was just so bummed at how bad it came out. I didn't want to go any further with the build. I was, I, I ended up throwing this piece out. I was like, so, I'm, I'm done with it. So I think, <laughs> so I think one of the the main takeaways is, for me, a, a Mega Bro tip to the to the people listening, if anyone, uh, don't practice on your model, your <laughs> yeah. final. Like I, keeping scrap around, even for paint. Like I learned that from Adam Savage, where you just. Like I take scraps and I test paint colors and stuff on them. Then that I went back. I went back like a week later, and I had I printed it at work and from a large format machine. So that's one piece. So I brought brought the whole thing back as one piece, and I went back in the paint. And I'm gonna paint this by hand because it was just time to just you know get it done. I wanted it because you know, the anime was great and it was a lot of fun. And I said I was gonna start it, and I already had captured like two two weeks worth of footage. So I brought it back and I was like, all right, I'm going to well, get Well, the, the, the main, the other takeaway from that is like sticking with it is another one. Yeah, yeah, coming back. But the thing was, the other one was just too, it looked too bad to salvage. So sometimes going back or sometimes having multiple pieces, you know, we don't, every time we do a job, we do it with one part. And that's Which, all we have. And yes. <laughs> it, and it makes it very hard to take chances and stuff. So yeah. we usually go safe. Especially, especially when we print something in materials that we don't normally have access to. Yeah. So we'll print something, you know, in different materials and it's tough. I like that gem. You printed that in the Stratus machine. Yeah, that's right? printed on the Stratus J750. And it's... Um, it's amazing, and I wanted I wanted to try XTC on this job too, yeah. and uh, it ended up working great. It, it coated the gem, and it took out a little bit of like the striation that was in it. And if yep. I would have put a few more coats on it, it would have definitely like a gem. So I think XTC might be something I start including in my later jobs. And then I was coating and trying not to mess it up. And you kept dropping. And it. I dropped it three times. I think you guys should see me flip it off because I got so annoyed at one point. That's pretty funny. So it's, so next time also tape it to something so you yeah, keep it. Yeah, uh, because I didn't want to let it sit flat because then it would it would uh, pool up. But yeah. you know. So, I, the, yeah, so the takeaway is let it drip. Yeah. Um, but also, so the, that gem coating it to try to make it look like a gem. And yeah, then, it, it gives it a good look. And then you can see a brief look at it here. Uh, and then on to the, then they, they're about to see the final. Yeah, here we go. In three, two, one. The, the size of it is pretty awesome. Very cosplay worthy. Yeah, I think so. You hit a lot of roadblocks and you went through them. So good job. I, I just kept coming at it. The gem is amazing. Yeah, thanks for printing it. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the build. Leave us a comment, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for our next build. And we'll see you next time.